Welcome to our online series of formation conferences entitled Sainthood and Spiritual Warfare During These Troubled Times. This is the last conference for the year 2020, the next conference in 2021 would be announced. This program is hosted by the Archdiocese of Manila Office of Exorcism in collaboration with the Philippine Association of Catholic Exorcists. This video presentation is talk number 17, on curses and bindings, how to overcome and be protected the Catholic way, to be given by Father Winston Kabating, OP, Exorcist of the Archdiocese of Manila. For more information and update of conference schedules for 2021, please visit www.facebook.com slash exorcism philippines. We also invite you to watch and share the links to our past episodes of conference talks found in our YouTube channel. For further information on the Ministry of Spiritual Liberation and Exorcism of the Archdiocese of Manila, for frequently asked questions, on how to contact us, and for available prayers to help you, please visit www.amoe.ph. Welcome to talk number 17, on curses and bindings, how to overcome and be protected the Catholic way, by Father Winston Kabating, OP Exorcist of the Archdiocese of Manila. Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ our Lord. Happy Advent. Today, the 17th talk on spiritual warfare. This will be our last talk for this year. And we will continue next year, 2021. We have an interesting closing conference for today. And that is curses and bindings. When evil men invoke the demons to inflict harm on their enemies, how to overcome and be protected the Catholic way. Let us now humble ourselves in the presence of Almighty God through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary as we ask for protection. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Together, we turn to you for protection, Holy Mother of God. Listen to our prayers and help us in our needs. Save us from every danger, glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Grant that we may praise you, O sacred Virgin. Give us strength against your enemies. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us talk about curses. And when we talk about curses, let us define our terms on how and what do we mean by them. First and foremost, what we are not talking about when we talk about curses in the context of the spiritual liberation ministry, we are not talking about cuss words, swear words, bad mouthing, foul words, words or all the types of what we usually call pagmumura. Therefore, what are curses and spells in the context of the, of the spiritual liberation ministry? Let us look at it from this perspective. A curse or malediction, in Tagalog we call it kulam or sumpa, is an illness obtained through the power of the evil one. It is often sent by someone to a victim by reason of hatred, envy, jealousy, or through a spell conjured by an occult practitioner. Very clear, an illness or misfortune Obtained through the power of the evil one, it is often sent by someone by reason of hatred, envy, or jealousy through a spell conjured by an occult practitioner. 
The Oxford Dictionary would define curses or malediction as a magical word or phrase uttered with the intention of bringing about evil or destruction. Now we ask the question, totoo ba ito? Totoo ba ang sumpa? Totoo ba ang kulam? Are they true? Do they really happen? We put it in perspective, the Catholic teaching. First, the biblical data. We find in the book of Numbers, chapters 22 to 24, the story of the diviner Balaam, who was commissioned by the king of Moab, Balak, to curse Israel. Because Israel was in the plains of Moab, and the king of Moab feared the Israelites. So Balak, the king of Moab, hired Balaam, a non-Israelite diviner and sorcerer, to place a malediction or a curse on the people of Israel who are camped worryingly on the plains of Moab. But God threatened Balaam of divine wrath should he ever proceed with his evil as God protects his people Israel. This story of Balaam is worthwhile contemplating because in the Old Testament, it is clear of the presence of diviners, soothsayers, witches, warlocks, shamans. And in the book of Deuteronomy, we have these words. Do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or who is a medium or spiritist, or who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord, because of these same detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. You must be blameless before the Lord your God. This verse tells us the presence of sorcerers, of witches, of those who cast spells. And in the eyes of Almighty God, these are detestable to the Lord. And he calls on the people of Israel to be blameless before the Lord, their God. The Catechism of the Catholic Church categorically tells us and teaches us that all practices, therefore, of magic or sorcery by which one attempts to tame occult powers so as to place them at one service and have a supernatural power over others, even if this were for the sake of restoring their health, are gravely contrary to the virtue of religion, gravely contrary to the way we should relate to that one true God. Practices of magic. When we talk about magic, we're not talking about the tricks, the illusionists. We're talking really of what we will often say, black magic, sorcery, witchcraft, in order to control things and control people. These practices are even more to be condemned when accompanied by the intention of harming someone or when they have recourse to the intervention of demons. I would like to go back to the last uh, term or the last thing that we, we presented to you. Even if this were for the sake of restoring their health. So this would be something like good. People would call this white magic or good magic. But here, the Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us 
quite clearly, these even are gravely contrary to the virtue of religion. And even more, they are detestable in the eyes of God if it is for the purpose of harming someone or when they have recourse to the intervention of demons. The same catechism would tell us wearing charms, amulets, talismans, our anting-antings, our pangontras, are also reprehensible. Spiritism often implies divination or magical practices. And the church, for her part, warns the faithful against it. Recourse to so-called traditional cures does not justify either the invocation of evil powers or the exploitation of another's credulity. Recourse to so-called traditional cures does not justify either the invocation of evil powers or the exploitation of another's credulity. And so when we ask, what are involved of why curses, hexes, spells are detestable before God? Why does God detest these actions? The answer given by the Catechism of the Catholic Church can be summarized in this way. Because curses are intrinsically evil as it wishes harm. And the source of the power is always diabolic. Curses are intrinsically evil as it wishes harm. And the power, the source of the power to make it effective is diabolic in nature. It is never from God. It is from the evil one. And therefore, the action itself goes against the first commandment. Witchcraft, sorcery, the use of charms, the use of spells, hexes, curses. These are sins against the first commandment. Which says, you shall have no other gods before me. And as our Lord Jesus Christ in the gospel would say, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your being. And then, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Or in another way, you shall love your neighbor as God loves you. Therefore, it is reprehensible for a Christian to go to occult practitioners. The first commandment, according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, embraces the virtues, the theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity. The first commandment requires us to nourish and protect our faith with prudence and vigilance and to reject everything that is opposed to it. Therefore, the saying, Wala namang mawawala is a sinful saying. Sumusunod sa mga pamahiin, sumusunod sa mga sabi-sabi, at ang sasabihin ay wala namang mawawala is actually contrary to the virtue of religion, of our relationship with God. Because the first commandment requires us to nourish and protect our faith with prudence and vigilance. And to reject everything that is opposed to it. And superstition is part and parcel of that. Idolatry not only refers to false pagan worship, it remains a constant temptation to faith. Idolatry consists in divinizing what is not God. Of referring things that are not of God as if they were from God. Man commits idolatry whenever he honors and reveres a creature in place of God. Whether this be gods or demons. 
Superstition, meanwhile, is also a sin against faith. And the Catechism tells us that superstition is the deviation of religious feeling. When we talk about religious feeling, we talk about how we relate to invisible beings. Superstition is the deviation of religious feeling and of the practices this feeling imposes. It can even affect the worship we offer to the true God. Kaya mga sabi-sabi, mga pamahiin, can even affect the worship we offer to the true God. Example, when one attributes an importance in some way magical to certain practices, lawful or necessary. To attribute the efficacy of prayers or the sacramental signs to their mere external performance, to the mere external ritual apart from interior dispositions and conversion that they demand. It is to fall into superstition. We also sin against irreligion, or we sin against faith through irreligion. That is, God's first commandment condemns the main sins of irreligion, tempting God in words or deeds, sacrilege. Tempting God, what does that mean? We pray to God to avenge us or to give us what we want. And if He delays or does not give us what we ask, we turn to other sources that would answer our wishes. Hindi tayo gumaling, pupunta tayo sa mga faith healers, pupunta tayo sa mga albularyo. Nagdasal tayo sa Panginoon, parang hindi sinasagot ang dasal natin, kaya pupunta tayo sa kanila. This is tempting God. This is a sin connected with irreligion. Sacrilege consists in profaning or treating unworthily the sacraments and other liturgical actions as well as persons, things, or places consecrated to God. Sacrilege is a grave sin, especially when committed against the Eucharist. For in this sacrament, the true body of Christ is made substantially present for us. Ito yung mga nagnanakaw ng blessed sacrament para sa gamitin kung saan mang pwedeng pang, pangkain sa manok para swertihin, para itago sa bahay, o para sa satanic worship or black mass, sacrilege. Thus, when we do rituals and prayers asked by the occult practitioner, even if they seem like Catholic prayers or gestures, this is sacrilegious because the intent is to do the instructions of the occult practitioner or a Catholic ritual with the intention of doing evil. Or when we abuse our bodies or that of others for an evil ritual, this is sacrilege as well. Gayuma or love potions seek that violation of the sacredness of another. Naalala ko na may mga bata na nagsabi na pag sila ay nag-spirit of the glass or Ouija board, they first pray, make the sign of the cross, Say that I believe in God, the Our Father, the Hail Mary, and Glory be. And then, they play with the Ouija board. That is sacrilege. Because what they do is not really to give worship to God. What they do in their intention is to do conjuring evil spirits through the Ouija board or the spirit of the glass. So look at this table, this matrix, the action and the sin, curses, hexes, spells, 
involve this, the action. It involves the invocation of the intervention of demons. Even, even if not explicitly said in the ritual, the action itself invokes evil spirits. Therefore, the sin is idolatry against the first commandment. Sorcery, witchcraft, spells, magic is a grave sin of superstition. And this too is under the ban of the first commandment. To do harm or injury or sickness on somebody because of anger, hatred, revenge, lust, envy is a grave sin against the commandment of charity flowing from the love of God and neighbor. Hence, it is against the first and the fifth commandment. Then, when we do witchcrafts, hexes, spells, etc., there is no fear of God in our hearts because we want to do evil without fear of punishment from God, who is the judge of the living and the dead. It's a grave sin of irreligion and pride. And this too is against the first commandment. And the use of amulets, talismans, as these in themselves seek protection of spirits or demons, again is a grave sin of idolatry and superstition, which is against the first commandment. And so, looking at that matrix and remembering it, what are the purposes of why curses are done? Bakit may mga taong gumagawa ng sumpa or kulam? First, as to purpose, this is a type of curse. Amorous. To obtain the love of a person or to destroy the object of amorous feelings relationship with others so as to free that person in order to obtain their love. In Filipino, we call this gayuma. Punta kay sa Kiapo. Meron dyan nagtitinda ng mga gayuma. Lalo na pag Valentine's Day, mga maraming bumibili niyan. Katuwaan lang. But that is a type of a curse. Because it is a spell. It is a hex. Then there is also, as a type of curse, poisonous. That is to cause physical, psychological, familial, or economic ruin on the victim. Then there is the binding to black action, movement, relationships. Punuin ng malas ang isang tao o hindi magkaroon ng trabaho, hindi gumanda ang buhay, this is a kind of binding curse. There is also transference. To transfer to the victim the hideous things usually in the form of torments performed on a doll or photo of the person targeted. This is commonly understood or envisioned as in using dolls or pictures, pag kinukulam, using pins, needles, blades over a doll or over a picture. And this and then takes effect on the victim it's himself or herself. There is also putrefaction to procure a sickness leading to death. Usually there is a rotting of an internal organ involved. And there is also possession. To conjure a demon and command it to possess the victim and destroy the victim. Yung mga sinasaniban, sinasapian ng kung ano para sirain ang buhay nila. How are curses usually done? And how does it operate? As to method, there is the direct, 
and the indirect. When we talk about direct curses, the curse is introduced to the intended victim through an object that would touch the body of the person, such as by way of cursed food or drink. And gayuma or love potion is an example of a direct form of a curse, hex, or spell. And there is also the indirect, where the curse is performed in an object that represents the victim, such as a voodoo doll. As to operation, curses are done by puncture and torture using pins, nails, hammer, blade, fire, ice, insects, bugs, worms, or by tying or binding with laces, knots, bridles, ribbons, bands, hoops, chains, or by putrefaction, burying the object, throwing it to the sea where it cannot be found. The cursed object is symbolic of the victim, and at times the cursed object is an animal sacrificed to the demon that would deliver the curse. By malediction, Tagalog, sumpa, wishing ill directly upon the person or on a photo or a symbol of that person. And by satanic rite, using a satanic cult or black mass performed with the purpose of inflicting mortal harm on the intended victim. As to means, with hexes and spells, puppets or meat with pins, bones of the dead, blood, toads, chickens, insects. Or with cursed objects through gifts, plants, pillows, dolls, ribbons, talismans. With an evil eye. A touch of the hand, an embrace, a breath. With a telephone, whether in silence, a word, a breath, or something else. Yung, with an evil eye, a touch of the hand, an embrace, a breath. Sa Pilipinas, meron yung mga ganyang uri ng uh, nangyayari na biglang may tatapik sa'yo. Tapos bigla kang magkakasakit. So sabi ng mga matatanda, yung tumapik sa iyo, tapikin mo ulit para bumalik sa kanya kung ano man yung binigay niya sa iyo. That is a form of a spell that is direct by touching. Yung iba naman, masamang tumingin. At dahil natignan, nabati, nagkakasakit. This is a form of an evil eye. With a telephone, whether in silence, a word, a breath, or something else. Ito yung may tatawag sa'yo, tahimik sa kabilang linya, hello ka ng hello, no one is answering, but you can only hear a breath, or sometimes a mumbling. Nagpapadala pala sa'yo ng curse. Evil eye of lust, malice, hatred, Envy and jealousy. Yung evil eye, narinig kong sinasabi yan, yung, yung masamang tingin, nanlilisik ng mga mata, na may gustong gawing masama sa kapwa. And in the Ministry of Spiritual Liberation and Exorcism, the evil eye is always connected with lust, with malice, with hatred, with envy and jealousy. And it is a specific type of magical curse that uses the stare of the eye to cause harm to someone or something. It is the intense desire to possess something or someone or that something evil happened to a particular person encountered face to face. Intense lust, malice, lust pag nanasa, malice, hatred, envy, and jealousy 
are the negativities that power the evil eye. Sa Tagalog, meron din tayong tinatawag na usog or balis. And this is also connected with the evil eye. It is a form of an evil eye, although unintentional, where a person who has been infected by it in the past is able to infect others. Kaya yung nabales o nausog ng bata, kadalasan, manguusog din. Paglaki niya. It is activated by a greeting or bati of an infected person over another who is spiritually susceptible. The symptom exhibited by the victim of usog include feeling sick, stomach ache, loss of appetite, vomiting, and restlessness. Animals and trees, oftentimes fruit-bearing trees, become victims of the body from persons who desire intensely to have them. And the traditional cure for balis or usog is using the saliva of the person who caused the usog and rubbed it on the affected part of the victim, usually the belly area. Kaya hindi ma-explain on a scientific and medical level, usog or balis. Kasi yung cure na gagamitin, laway. Ano kinalaman nun? So the, the effect is something physical, but the cause is spiritual in nature. How is one a victim of a curse? Paano tumatalab ang sumpa, kulam, or usog sa isang tao? And the answer is unrepented grave sin and, a, and occult exposure make a person very susceptible to be affected by spells, hexes, and curses. Unrepented grave sin and occult exposure make a person very susceptible to be affected by spells, hexes, and curses. In the past conferences, the exorcist presented to you the four major spiritual openings. Grave unrepented sins, occult exposure, talking to spirits, and emotional trauma. This weaken us spiritually. And in the cases of curses, one becomes susceptible by the presence of these spiritual openings. A curse's power over a human being, the victim, is dependent on the spiritual openings present, including that of being in the state of sin. And if a person is affected by a curse, the person has an existing predisposition or area of weakness. Very clear. Pag tinamaan ng sumpa, ng kulam, ng hex or spell, ng usog or balis, merong spiritual opening yung tao. Which is often connected with either sin, grave sin, or occult exposure. Pagsamahin mo yung dalawang yun, bukas na bukas spiritually ang tao to be affected by curses. In cases of usog or balis, the victim is susceptible because of prior exposure to occult practices. Oftentimes, when children are affected, it is because of the occult or superstitious rituals done to them by parents or grandparents. Or that the parents themselves were either victims of it before and the remedy used was occult in nature or that they themselves can cause it on others. Merong mga 
places in the Philippines, for example, where they kill an animal, usually a chicken, and get the blood and put it on the forehead in the form of a cross of a child, lalong lalo na pagkaarawan o birthday ng bata. That action, even if it's like in the form of a cross, is an occult action. And therefore, the one who makes that has a spiritual authority over the child, either as a parent or as a grandparent. And hence, the person, the little child, becomes now exposed to occult practices, making the child susceptible to curses, hexes, spells, and usog. Yung kontra-usog na mga paraphernalia, nakatulang nyo nakikita nyo sa screen, na itong uh, kulay red, yan daw, sasabihin nila, kulay red, kailangan kulay red. Pantaboy ng usog. Walang kinalaman yan. Bakit red? Natatakot ba demonyo sa red? Hindi. It's a superstitious thing. And ano ang loob ng mga pouches na yan? Also occult objects. And therefore, is a double thing. Superstitious beliefs, tapos meron pang occult objects or curse objects sa loob. Akala ng mga tao, pangontra yan. Pero in reality, they attract evil spirits to latch on the children. Sino may kasalanan? Magulang o mga lolo't lola? Sabi nila, wala namang mawawala. But actually, marami. Gayuma or love, amorous potions, why are they reprehensible in the eyes of Almighty God? The, the gayuma is a nefarious or evil potion intended to bind the person of amorous interest to self. Gusto mong mapaibig ang isang taong kursunada mo. And by doing so, you destroy any existing love relationship of that person to another. Kung may asawa na siya, o meron na siyang uh, boyfriend or girlfriend, gusto mo maghiwalay sila by, by putting a potion. A love potion on the food or drink of the intended victim. The effect of the potion is temporary but becomes permanent when sexual intimacy occurs as it creates an unholy soul tie due to immoral sexual relationship between two people. The demon that binds them because of this immoral sexual relationship is the demon Asmodeus, the demon of violent lust. So you have the demon, the occult demon, present in the potion, and at the same time, the sexual relationship that is immoral, binds them both. So, ilan yung evil spirits involved na yan? And this demon would claim ownership of the person who bewitched through a potion the object of his or her love. So, yung mga gumagamit ng mga gayuma, reprehensible, kasuklam-suklam sa mata ng Panginoon. What happens in the spiritual life of persons who engage in the occult or new age practices? The answer is straightforward. By using occult or new age practices in order to do a spell over a person, they create a bond with occult spirits. They forge a bond with occult spirits. When you talk about occult spirits, they're never good. They're always evil, demonic. They're demons. And they, they create the satanic seal. What is a satanic seal? Whether direct or indirect, engaging self in occult practices 
creates an unholy bond or relationship, soul ties with occult spirits. And by using the objects given by the spirits, they deepen the bond. This bond is called the satanic seal, where the spirit now claims certain legal rights to the person that sought its favors. So ang tao na pumunta sa occult practitioner to do a particular spell over someone binds himself as well to evil spirits. This is called the binding or the unholy soul ties is called the satanic seal. Direct involvement means persons who willfully seek the service of occult practitioners or engages in the occult or new age practices or willfully use occult paraphernalia such as amulets, talismans, potions, and anything given by an occult practitioner. Mahalaga yung salitang willfully. And that is where, of course, the sin of idolatry comes in. Because now, you serve other gods. Persons who willfully seek the services of occult practitioners. Ito yung mga taong pupunta sa mangkukulam. At of course, the mangkukulam itself. Or engages in the occult or new age practices. Or willfully use occult paraphernalia. Such as amulets, mga pangontra, talismans, potions. And anything given by an occult practitioner. The satanic seal is caused by a direct involvement. Bakit may satanic seal? Remember, when we were baptized, we were sealed for God. The chrism oil that was used, the baptism, we belong to God. And prior to doing that, we renounce the devil. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God? Yes. And so we seal ourselves for God. But then when we go to occult practitioners to do something against another and we are baptized Christians, we re, we in our action we have renounced our Christian faith. Our faith in God and we embrace the devil once more. Because we said, do you renounce Satan? I do. But then you do things of the devil which is occult, occult actions. This is a direct involvement. We, we allow the evil one to have legal rights to us. Instead of God having rights to us, we give ourselves to the devil. Indirect involvement, meanwhile, involves persons without their full informed consent who are brought to occult practitioners or occult new age masters, as what often happens to infants and children, being brought to healers by their parents or grandparents, or are made to wear occult paraphernalia. Ayan, yung kontrausog na inilalagay sa mga bata. Or that they were consecrated while in the womb to spirits by their parents or grandparents. Or that the bloodline was consecrated by, a, by means of a satanic pact done by an ancestor through some ritual. Mas marami yung indirect involvement. People are not fully aware. Dinala sila ng lolo nila, ng lola nila, ng magulang nila sa albularyo. At yung albularyo, gumawa ng niritualan yung bata, binigyan ng kung ano-ano, hindi naman naintindihan ng bata. That is an indirect involvement, but just the same. Why? Why does it have an effect? Because the spiritual authority given by God to parents and grandparents, instead of using it to make the children love God more and grow in holiness, they use it to bring these children to the evil one. Kaya yung word na sinasabi natin, walang, mag- walang mawawala. Ang daming nawala. Because we willingly hand over innocent people, like the children, to the evil one. Kaya magtataka tayo, bakit yung bata nakukulam, nauusog? Because precisely that, we have brought it to the danger zone. 
the presence of the satanic seal or unholy soul ties with the occult spirits make a person easily susceptible to curses, hexes, and spells. So, pag tinablan ng sumpa, ng kulam, ng gayuma, ng angahulugan, yung tao, predisposed na. If one is affected by spells, hexes, curses, then it is a sign that there is an existing unholy soul tie with occult spirits. When a child is baptized and the parents live a real Christian life, the child is protected. Pero pag ang mga magulang, ang mga lolo at lola, ang daming pamahiin, yung protection na binibigay ng baptism sa bata, humihina kasi yung mismong mga tao na dapat sila magdadala sa bata sa Panginoon, eh sa iba nila dinadala. How do occult practitioners, witches and spellcasters, know if a person is vulnerable? Paano nalalaman ng mga mangkukulam kung yung tao na pinakukulam ay tatablan? And the answer is the demon of divination which gives the witches or the occult practitioners power inform them that the potential victim is open to curses. The demon of divination of the occult third eye informs them. Paano napasok yung occult third eye? Well, all occult, occult powers are given by the spirit of divination. In our talk about the occult third eye of the spirit of divination, ito yon. All occult powers are given by the spirit of divination. Thus, all occult practitioners have their third eye very active. With this, the demons are able to influence, communicate, and instruct them. The occult practitioner, therefore, divines or inquires by some means through a ritual if a person is susceptible to curses, spells, or hexes. If the victim have sinful spiritual openings, then the spell can be cast. If the person is protected by God because of sanctifying in actual graces present in the soul of the person, the caster will not attempt for fear of retaliation from the demon who cannot accomplish the evil because of the divine protection. Very clear yan. Kaya hindi lahat tinatablan. Lalong-lalo na kung yung tao ay nasa grasya ng Panginoon. Ito, malungkot na event na nangyayari when parents solemnly curse their children. Isinusumpa ng mga magulang ng kanilang mga anak. Naka-encounter na po ako niyan sa Ministry of Spiritual Liberation and Exorcism. Ang kwento po ay itong dalaga, dalagang anak, eh ligawin. Lumalabas ng bahay, nakikipagtipan sa boyfriend, eh ayaw nung, lolo, nung lola at saka yung nanay, yung mga lalaki, na sinasamahan. So, pinakulam nila yung kanilang apo, anak. Yung para manatili sa bahay. Ano nangyari dun sa dalaga? Nagkasakit yung dalaga. Nasa loob lagi ng bahay. O, di hindi lumalabas. Pero the effect on that teenage girl of the sickness was she become she became debilitated hindi na siya lumalabas yung kagandahan niya nawala na nagwilt na dahil sa sakit walang makita ang mga doktor and so hindi nila alam pero actually it was the curse of parents who have spiritual authority over their children of grandparents who have spiritual authority over their grandchildren 
through the parents, convoke or invoke demons to bring in misfortune to those directly under them. When parents solemnly curse their children, what happens on the level, spiritual level? The bond of love is destroyed that should exist between parents and children. The bond of love which is very strong. Suddenly, it is destroyed. How is it destroyed? By intentionally calling on the devil against their children. The God-given spiritual authority of the parents over their children for the purpose of protection is now corrupted as the parents surrender that authority to the demons. Pinayagan mo yung mga evil spirits na saktan ang mga anak. Nasirain ang kanilang buhay to prevent them from being successful, from being happy. Ay, hindi mo makokontrol ang mga demonyo. Pag binigyan mo sila ng authority over a person, they will do whatever they want. And it's always destruction. The parents, meanwhile, or the grandparents, put themselves in spiritual danger because by invoking evil spirits against their children, they themselves put themselves under the power of the evil one. Again, babalikan natin yung baptismal renunciation. Do you reject Satan in all his works and all his empty promises? And then suddenly you invoke them. So you negate that renunciation that you did in baptism and you invite back the evil spirits into your life. The person put themselves in spiritual danger as the evil one takes control of them. And the children if not in the state of grace, are susceptible to the experience, to experience of the effect of the curse, as well as the psychological harm of the destruction of familial relationships. Imagine mo, malaman ng mga anak, isinumpa sila ng mga magulang nila. That, that breaks the bond of love, that creates psychological trauma and harm, breaks the familial relationship, which, is, which now has an effect psychologically. And at the same time, because of that trauma, that pain, the children now become susceptible to experience the effect of the curse. Kaya mahalaga, yung love relationship between children and parents. And when parents curse their children, you break that relationship, that love relationship, that protected or protective relationship with children. And you introduce the evil one to enter into that relationship. After putting that all in context, what are curses? How do they take effect? How do we become susceptible? We now go to the cure Catholic cure. And we understand that in scriptures and in the catechism of the Catholic Church, a Catholic should never go to occult practitioners for healing. Never. Because you introduce a deceptive spirit into your life. The Catholic cure is the most effective way. Put on the whole armor of God, St. Paul says to the Ephesians, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Protection from curses, which are spiritual in nature, the cause is spiritual, and it is the demon that causes the curse, the only way to fight it is through the power of God. As the curse is diabolic in source, the only protection strong enough to truly curb or stop it 
must be supernatural or divine in character. Hindi ka pwedeng magpunta sa isang albularyo na ang kapangyarihan ay galing sa mga engkanto, sa mga masasamang espiritu para gumaling sa isang kulam na ipinadala rin ng isang demonyo. Kaya nga't maiintindihan natin itong bagay na to. Pero gumaling naman, Father, gumaling. The person got healed. Yes, because the sickness was caused by an evil spirit. And therefore, nagsasanib puwersa lang sila. Gumaling kunyari. Tumahimik ng konti yung nag-cause ng sakit. Only to attack in a more vile manner later on. Sometimes years after. Levels of protection. So only God can truly stop a curse. So levels of protection. First, on the level of the soul. We must be before God. Holy. The presence of sanctifying grace makes us friends of God. And God protects His friends, protects His children. We become children of God if we do His will. The presence of sanctifying grace. Habitual sanctifying grace fortified by the sacraments of the church and fervent in prayer life. We protect our soul. Naalala niyo sabi ko, paano nalalaman ng ng isang mangkukulam o ng isang spellcaster na vulnerable yung tao? Ibig sabihin, nakita niya, the person is not in the state of grace. In sealing the soul from sin and the devil, that is, allowing us once more to live in the life of God, the sanctifying grace, requires true repentance and renouncement from all connections with the occult. All connections with the occult. All unholy soul ties, links, and relationships. All unholy pacts and contracts. And all connection to masonry. If the victim is a mason or there is a mason in the direct bloodline. There must be a sincere repentance and renouncement from all connections that is unholy. Because unholiness and holiness cannot live in the person, the person's souls at the same time. You are either a friend of God or you're not. There's sanctifying grace in your soul or not. Ganun lang yon. And the pwedeng half. Half my sanctifying grace, half wala. No, you, we must live in sanctifying grace in order to be truly protected by God. And then it requires also on the level of the mind and the will. So protection on the level of the soul, that is the sanctifying grace, the sacraments, and a fervent prayer life. Hindi yung basta dasal, dasal, dasal lang, no? Empty prayers. No, it must be a prayer life that flows from love of God. And on the level of the mind and the will, we need to live a life of virtues. A righteous life. A virtuous life. And this kind of virtuous life does not happen sitting down. We work with it. Purity, for example, yung mga tinatabla ng gayuma. Ba't sila tinatabla ng gayuma? Remember, gayuma or love potion is fueled by lust. And therefore, the person, the victim, para hindi siya tabla nun, must live in purity. But if the person is impure, tatablan siya. Hence, when we talk about 
the protection of our soul, our mind, our will. There's also a need for protection for our lower faculties, in the emotions, in the passions, in our desires. And prayers help a lot because prayers allow us to offer everything to God, to allow God to transform every area of our life. And forgiveness, humility, is very important. Hindi lang yung galit. Kasi alam nyo, pag ang mga tao nagpupunta sa albularyo at nalaman nilang kasi kinukulam sila, gusto nilang malaman kung sino ang kumulam sa kanila para makakontra sila. And what fuels the contra? Hatred, anger, revenge. But God wants us to put everything in His hands because God is the just judge of the living and the dead. And therefore, he asked us to forgive our enemies. Hence, in our prayers, the prayer for the forgiveness of one's enemies, and prayer to God to break all generational sins and curses. Hindi na mamana ang kasalanan. Pero, yung spirito, yung evil spirits in the generation, in the family, in the bloodline, goes down. And therefore, we are offering our life to the Lord and asking Him to break all bonds of these generational sins, all these rebellions made against God in the family tree and all the curses. The hold of spirits in the bloodline. You're asking the Lord to break the hold of the evil spirits in the bloodline. And then after breaking asking the Lord to break the spirits in the bloodline, you now ask the Lord to heal every member of the family. Those who are living. And even our memories of those who have passed away. The healing of the family tree. These are external in the sense Enemies, parents, grandparents, ancestors, relatives. But now we are also asking the Lord to heal our intimate wounds that we ourselves, that we ourselves have caused. Prayer for the healing of the intimate wounds. The effect of our own sins in our life. Nag-iiwan lagi yan ng lamat eh. Every time we fall into sin, we become weaker. And those are intimate wounds. Wounds that we have inflicted in ourselves. And therefore, we ask the Lord to heal us of the intimate wounds we have caused ourselves. These prayers help a lot in sealing the openings to the emotions, passions, and desires. Then we have the external protection through the use of the sacramentals, devout use and proper use of the Catholic sacramentals. Some people who are in the occult or practices occult have sacramentals. They wear St. Benedict's, they have a miraculous medal, they have a brown scapular, they even wear their rosaries. Pero lahat yan, para sa kanila, protection in the form of magic, anting-anting. Without proper disposition, yun nga yung sasabi doon, superstition eh. Superstition is a wrong feeling towards holy objects where its external use, devoid of internal disposition, are used for the purpose of protection. Mali yun. Superstitious beliefs yun. Kasi all the sacraments, all the sacramentals require genuine faith and trust in God. Hindi siya pwedeng display lang. Kung meron kang 
St. Benedict Medal, protected ka na. Eh kung wala ka sa state of grace. You know, when you go to online shopping, may mga nagtitinda, even witches of St. Benedict Medals. Anong sasabihin nila? Protection against evil spirits. Huwag yung bibilin yun. Those have been consecrated by them. They are cursed objects. Tampered with. The following sacramentals and pious practices are very effective in curving demonic activity in cases of curses, hexes, or spell, but they require genuine faith and trust in God. Holy water with blessed salt sprinkled in the place or ingested by the afflicted. Holy oil, the blessed exercise oil, anointing the body and for ingestion. Wearing of the St. Benedict's cross or medal, the St. Anthony's exorcism cross or medal, the miraculous medal of our Blessed Lady or the scapular of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, or, and devotion to Our Lady, the holy angels, and the saints, they help, they help a lot in protection of the body and the soul. But it requires, again, sanctifying grace. Because without sanctifying grace, ano meaning nung sinusuot natin, ginagamit natin? Wala, again, magic. And that is what we need to remove from ourselves, the magical mentality. Rather, we entrust everything to God. We have faith in Almighty God. Remember always to ask God to bless the food and drink you are to take. Nawawala na yung tradition na yan. Pag pumunta ka sa isang fast food, pupunta ka sa isang restaurant, halimbawa, seldom would you see people, even magbabarkada, to pause for a while to bless God, to thank the Lord for the food. Lamun agad. Kain agad. It is good to always bless the food and drink, to understand that every food and drink is from God. And therefore, we need to bless Him and thank Him. But at the same time, it is for purpose of protection. By understanding that food and drink comes from God, we negate the power of the evil one that may have placed something in the food or the drink. In addition, you can sprinkle some blessed water, Blessed salt, blessed oil, on the food and drink coming from doubtful sources. Pag may mga taong pinipilit kang kumain, kainin mo yung kainin mo at hindi mo sila kilala or nagdududa ka, you can put these sacramentals. Blessed salt, blessed oil, or holy water. On food and drink coming from doubtful sources. We need to remove from our property, from ourselves, from our everything that belongs to us, all amulets, all talismans, all pagan deities, even if they be just figures for display. All potions given by healers, all secret prayers or orations, and all superstitious objects and practices. Because these are cursed objects, and the presence of cursed objects in our possession in our homes is an opening. Again, alalahanin natin that one of the four uh, spiritual openings is occult exposure. And these objects are occult objects. Minsan, meron akong staff na gusto magpa-bless ng bahay. Papasok pa lang ako ng bahay, meron ang orasyon. Nakapi, nakalagay dun sa pintuan. Sabi ko, tanggalin yan those prayers are not prayers. Those are bastardized Latin things invented, written by occult practitioners. They will not protect you. They will invite evil spirits in your homes to molest you at some appropriate on opportune time. Meron isang akong kakilala na nagpa-bless 
ng bahay. I was the one who blessed the house. I was the one who who did a deliverance prayer in the house and blessed it. And they were quiet. And things were happy in the house. Peaceful. Mamaya, yung isang, yung one of the may-ari invited a pseudo-Catholic cult group in the house to do rituals. Spiritually speaking, you negated the blessing, the consecration that was done previously by God and invited evil spirits once more. Also, ano nangyari dito sa tahanan ito? Nagkasimula na naman sila magkaroon ng sakit. Kamalas-malas. May mga nangyayari na sa bahay. And they did not know what it is, where it came from. And when somebody told them, it is because you invited this cult in your homes and allowed them to do rituals of protection in your homes. Pero hindi sila maniwala. Alam nyo, ba't ayaw nilang maniwala? Kasi they're proud people. They do not want to admit nagkamali sila. So they could not make the renouncement. And now, their house is infested. All amulets, all talismans, all pagan deities, all potions given by healers, or secret prayers, orations, and all superstitious objects and practices. These have all to be removed and destroyed. What to do when encountering stubborn spells, hexes, and curses? Father, we, we did everything. We renounced everything. And we are repentant of the wrongs that we have committed. Pero hindi pa rin mawala. Parang matigas. Parang uh, stubborn yung spell or yung hex or yung curse na pinadala sa amin. Is there anything else that we can do? Yes. You seek the help of the church through her priest. You never go again to occult practitioners. You never obey occult practitioners. You go and seek the help of the church through her priest. Why? Because the church has been given by Christ the power of the keys. Whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And the, and the Lord Jesus Christ gave his church, that authority. And the church delegated that authority to be used and exercised by her priest. Exorcisms against curses, the evil eye, hexes and spells, if they are very stubborn, you can ask the help of the church for the radical intervention using the power of the keys given by Christ to his church. The spiritual weapons available to use by Catholic priests to help the faithful are many. For example, you have the anointing of the senses with oil of catechumens. You have the prayer of breaking of unholy seals and consecrations. The prayer of breaking unholy soul ties, links, and relationships. Prayer of breaking of curses and spells. The breaking of generational curses if present or suspected. And the minor exorcisms connected with the anointing of the senses. These are spiritual weapons. Powerful weapons. Because Christ himself guarantees it. It is Christ working in his church. Exorcism and closing of the occult third eye if the victim is involved with divination. Exorcism against the evil eye of lust, malice, hatred, envy, and jealousy. And the exorcism prayer of Saint Cyprian of Nicomedia to break curses. I would like to 
Underline number eight, the exorcism against the evil eye of lust, malice, hatred, envy, and jealousy, especially connected to the usog or the balance. Lay people can use this exorcism for their children or for themselves. Of course, it presupposes that you are in the state of grace because you cannot fight the devil using your own power. You need God's power for that. And the first thing to have or possess is that you must be a friend of God. You must be in the state of grace. And if you are not in the state of grace, do not fight the evil one. Lolokohin ka lang yan. Kayang kaya ka niya. We need God's protection. The exorcism prayer of St. Cyprian of Nicomedia to break curses and also the prayer of exorcism of St. Cyprian of Nicomedia against all magic, witchcraft, and sorcery. Exorcism prayers of St. Gregory of Natsiansen to destroy all magic and malefice. And other Eastern Catholic prayers to break the power of any magic and diabolic action are all intended against the spirits of magic, of sorcery, of witchcraft, of curses. Very, very powerful prayer, which the church can use to help people victimize by these nefarious spirits. And if a person is possessed, remember there is such a curse as invoking the demon to possess the enemy, a solemn exorcism can be performed. After liberation, we need, again, the help of Almighty God to close every part of our life from the influence of the evil one and to consecrate once more our life to Him. It is regaining back the baptismal renunciations and promises. Do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works, I do. And all his empty promises, I do. Do you believe in God? I do. It is recovering back what we have given away. God always receives the repentant sinner, the prodigal son or prodigal daughter. We only need humility, repentance contriteness, sincerity, asking for forgiveness and protection. And after we have renounced the evil one and confess our sins in the sacrament of reconciliation, we make our act of consecration. We can ask the Blessed Mother, the Virgin Mary, to put us under her maternal protection. To bring us ever closer to Jesus. To bring us ever closer to the most holy trinity. And never be separated from them. The priest on his part will confirm this act of consecration of the patient. By anointing the senses with chrism. Accompanied by a prayer of sealing. Father, ang dami mong sinabing prayers. So nami makikita yan. All the prayers mentioned here are freely downloadable at the AMO website. www.amoe.ph At kung meron pa kayong mga katanungan about the Ministry of Spiritual Liberation that is frequently asked questions, you can also refer to that website. There is an FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions, portion where you can see what are the usual questions asked by people connected with the Ministry of Spiritual Liberation and Exorcism. And the website also provides you of information on how to contact us and what to do in case you need the services of the churches. Ministry of Spiritual Liberation and Exorcism. In conclusion, my brothers and sisters in Christ, 
James 4, 7 tells us, Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. God always wins. God always wins. God always wins. Kaya dapat alam natin kanino tayo nakakampi. God always wins. There is no evil that He cannot destroy for good is greater than evil. Resist the devil solid in your Catholic faith. Know your faith. Know your Catholic faith. Huwag mo siyang ipagpapalit sa ibang relihiyon. Huwag mo siyang ipagpapalit sa mga albularyo at sa mga faith healers at sa mga talismans or amulets. Stick simply to what the church, the Catholic Church teaches and gives to us because it carries with it the assurance that I am with you always until the end of the world. Christ founded his church on Peter's and on Peter's confession. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that is enough for us. We hold on to that faith in Jesus Christ and we hold on to the faith we have in his church. Brothers and sisters, the Blessed Mother is our protector before God. Let us develop our devotion to her in sincerity. Our holy guardian angel was given to us by God to watch over us and protect us. Let us have a devotion to our holy guardian angel. The saints are there to help us and pray for us, to protect us. And the holy angels of God are there to help us and to protect us. Thank you very much for being with us this year in the time of pandemic to be formed in the faith, to be strong in order to recognize the deceptions of the evil one and how to resist them. You now get to understand God always wins. God always wins. Never lose faith. Put your faith in God and in God alone. Thank you very much for joining us. This conference number 17 is the last one for this year, 2020. We will resume next year on a to-be-announced date. We continue to pray for one another that the Lord in His kindness and mercy continue to protect us in the midst of this pandemic but also to strengthen us in our faith, in hope, and in charity. God bless you all. And in behalf of the Archdiocese Manila Office of Exorcism and the Philippine Association of Catholic Exorcists, we wish you all a blessed and happy Christmas and a grace-filled New Year. May the Lord continue to watch over you and your entire family and keep you always safe until the full manifestation of the kingdom of God. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. Good evening. Let us now pray to our Blessed Lady. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly to you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you do we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word, incarnate despise not our petitions but in your mercy hear and answer us amen in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen god bless you all
Special thanks go to Father Winston F. Kabadin, O.P., Exorcist of the Archdiocese of Manila, our conference speaker, the staff of the UST Communications Media Bureau headed by Father Christopher Jeffrey Atona, O.P., for the video recording, Father Carlo Magno Marcello for the music, and Father Nonnet Legaspi, for the video editing. For an update of our next season of conferences for 2021, please visit www.facebook.com slash exorcism philippines. A YouTube link will be provided our viewers for all scheduled talks. We also invite you to watch and share the links to our past episodes of conference talks found in our YouTube channel. For further information on the Ministry of Spiritual Liberation and Exorcism of the Archdiocese of Manila, for frequently asked questions, on how to contact us, and for available prayers to help you, please visit www.amoe.ph. Thank you and may God bless you and keep you safe.